Coming up on this episode of DL Weekly, there is a plan for the treehouse in Adventureland, new holiday updates for It's a Small World, Wakanda comes to Disney California Adventure, Festival of the Holidays has returned with new merchandise and entertainment, we talk about our trip to Marceline and more. DL Weekly starts now. Howdy, partners! For your safety, remain seated with your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast, and be sure to watch your ears. If any of you folks are wearing hats or glasses, best remove them, because Tag and Teresa have the wildest ride in the wilderness. Hello and welcome to this episode of DL Weekly for the week of November 16th, 2022. I'm Tag Bushman. And I'm Teresa Urban. Thank you to Anna, T, and Peggy C for becoming official weekly tiers on our Patreon. Our supporters get some pretty fun perks like DL Weekly swag, bonus content, and access to our Discord community. A special thank you to Bo H, Rebecca W, Brian P, and Jennifer N for your continued support. If you would like some more magic in your day, head on over to dlweekly.net slash support to join our community. Well, the holidays are quickly approaching, and we will be sending out postcards again this year to all of our supporters at every level. If you're currently a supporter on Patreon, please log in and make sure that your address is up to date so you can get your card. If you'd like to get a postcard from us, head on over to dealweekly.net slash support to become an official weekly tier and get on the list. Now let's get to the news. Well, Disney has officially announced their plans for the Treehouse. After months of speculation, definitely between us, the Treehouse will be home to a new family and pay tribute to the original 1962 attraction, the Swiss Family Robinson. The Adventureland Treehouse, as it is going to be called, will return in 2023. How excited are you for this? I was freaking out when they announced it. I'm just like, I don't know. There's something amazing about this. Not because it's going to be like the biggest, the best, the most advanced, most awesome attraction ever. But I was just so excited that it's not directly tied to an IP. So, yes, 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 the treehouse is going to be kind of reminiscent of the original Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. But it is not the Swiss Family Robinson treehouse 2.0. This is a new story. This is a new family. Characters that we haven't been introduced to yet. So I'm just so excited that this is something, you know, something fresh and something new. And it's not just, you know. Let's just slap a new IP on the existing space. I'm so excited for that. Yeah, I never thought it would happen, but it says right here in black and white on the Disney Parks blog, the guests will once again enter by a giant water wheel and follow the wood rope stairways up, up to the bows. And oh my goodness, this water wheel was one of the best things. We talk about it with Tomorrowland a lot, that you need that kinetic energy, you need some movement, Mm -hmm. some excitement. And that's what this did for that. So I'm hoping that they bring back uh, kind of what they had there before. It sounds like they're going to just do some amazing stuff up there. I'm very, very excited, just like you are. I'm just glad that this will finally be open again. Obviously, we don't have the you know the tree that was in the middle of the walkway that's been removed but i remember going up on this when i was a kid and i really enjoyed it even though swiss family robinson was uh not something even to to this day i don't think i've seen swiss family robinson but um i could still appreciate it and enjoy it so this also seems to leave it open that it's kind of like an un you know it's just kind of like a family that's reminiscent of Swiss family. But to me, it seems like they could interweave some stuff with the adventures and explorers like we were talking about before, that kind of thing. It wouldn't be too hard to kind of weave that stuff in. How closely have you looked to the concept art? They are. They have hints that they are weaving in some of the sea storyline as well. If you're Yeah, if you're looking at the concept art, if you're looking at there's like different, I don't know, rooms is what they're calling it but the room that's kind of to the top left there Mm -hmm. is a flag hanging off of this edge there and it looks awfully like the c logo or the c emblem on the middle of that flag Mm -hmm. so i think that they're going to be tying that storyline in as well which is fun because they kind of built out that storyline a little bit more with the refresh of the jungle cruise of course we have that pieces of that story in other parks around the world as well so i think that it's really fun that they're tying that bigger story into this new version of this attraction. The other thing that's really exciting to me 
is that if, you know, stairs aren't your thing or those that would, you know, those that aren't able to go up and down the stairs, it's not, this isn't going to be an attraction that you just, that just isn't designed for you anymore. They actually are taking a lot of time and expanding the story on the ground level as well. So they're going to have a bottom floor that showcases like a kitchen and a dining room, but it also showcases the father's art studio, which displays sketches and paintings of the rooms above. So if you're not able to travel up to the rooms to see them yourself, you can still kind of experience them from the ground floor there. So I think that's really cool that they're making it more accessible as well. That is awesome. Mm -hmm. Different experience, of course, but still, you know, it's better than just saying, whoop, you know, sorry. So I'm really happy that they're doing that. I think that's really important. I totally agree. But yeah, I'm so excited about this. The one thing... Correct me if I'm wrong, because I never got to experience this as the Swiss Family Robinson. Or if I did, I don't have a strong enough memory. I only have memories of it being Tarzan's treehouse. With the water wheel, is that... How do I want to say this? Where was the water wheel located? Because I was was slightly worried about... It's not where the little man of Disneyland currently resides, is it? No. Okay, good. I got a little nervous that he might have to be moved. No, if you look at the concept art, it's... It's there in the front, kind of where kind it was before. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, the the little man Disneyland's kind of more to the left hand okay. side. Okay, basically. good. I yeah. got a little nervous for him because he didn't. He was not a resident that we could go visit when right. the Swiss Family Robinson Treehouse was around. So I was like, oh no, is he gonna have to? Is he gonna have to relocate? So that makes me happy that no, he it was closer right to where, where the is. trunk of the tree was, kind of where you exit now. It was kind of oh, there. okay, okay, yep. Gotcha. I'm excited about this. I really am. And I and like you said, I'm glad that there's going to be some kinetic energy because I do feel with Tarzan's Treehouse, that rope bridge, the people moving across that brought us some of that kinetic energy. And it also, in my opinion, I liked having that kind of barrier in between the two lands where you couldn't see Pirates of the Caribbean when you were sure. walking in the middle of Adventureland. So obviously that's not that part's still going to be open, but I'm just glad that there's more movement and more life in that corner of the park. Me too. It's a Small World opened this past weekend with its holiday overlay, but that wasn't the only change this attraction saw. Two new dolls have been added to this classic attraction. The new dolls are both in wheelchairs and can be found in the South America scene and the finale scene. Imagineer Kim Irvine told CNN, quote, We are always looking to enhance our attractions with not just fun things, but meaningful things as well, end quote. Yeah, this is another one of those interesting additions that they didn't really put out there. There wasn't, you know, this is coming. It was just kind of the the attraction opened and people saw it. And how cool. I just think it's I really think it's... neat and something that they didn't like have to do, but they decided to do. So I think it's great. And Kim Irvine, of course, like, I think that this is one of the attractions that's kind of her baby. And so, you know, she oversaw prior when they added the characters in that we know, right? The Peter Pan mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. everything. So so we know she's done a great job at this. And I'm glad that, they, that, that people pointed it out and talked about it because I feel like I may not have realized it right away because it's blended in so well that it doesn't stand out or or like there's no attention really drawn to it. It just is there. And that's how it should be mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. the whole point is that we're all in one world together and, you know, it's not like something has to stand out. You know, we're all we're all just people. The thing that's really cool about this, too, is this is the first time in Disneyland's history that there are characters in wheelchairs on an attraction so that's also just like a big a big thing overall so not only we've got the i've got the article linked from cnn it's a really nicely done article so not only are they you know are these dolls added to our attraction here in disneyland but they are looking at adding these same dolls in other small world attractions around the world as well but what they're going to do is they're kind of making sure that they make, you know, make sense. So they might not be in the same room or in the same exact spot um, because each of the attractions are different. So they might be different in that way. But the thing that's really, really cool is that the Disneyland creatives actually worked with an accessibility team that that is headed by Aaron Quintanilla, which is the manager of accessibility for the Disneyland Resort. And they really worked hard to make sure that the look was authentic down to even like how the doll's feet were positioned on the wheelchair foot plates and stuff like that. So I just thought it was really interesting. The fact that they looked at 
all of the details down to the angle of of how the feet are placed to make sure that they were doing this right, I thought was just just really incredible. So not only is this, I mean, it's exciting that it's it's a small world holidays back. It's such a great overlay, so fun, but like it's extra magical and extra special this year now that these two new dolls are included as well. I'm excited to see how these transition into the regular version of the attraction because I'm sure they're going to stick around for oh, that. Yeah. So it'll yep. be interesting to see what the characters and stuff look like in their normal outfits. So mm-hmm. very exciting. The other cool thing too is it's a small world holiday is celebrating its 25th anniversary. And so there are little Easter eggs throughout the attraction. So be on the lookout for the number 25. I want to say that there are 13 confirmed 25s in the attraction. I'll give you a hint. One of them is Santa's address is now 25 in the North Pole. So in each each of the different rooms and sections, be on the lookout for these little Easter egg 25s. Again, there's 13 of them. So I know I'm going to keep our eyes peeled. Is there only 13 or is there potentially 25 25s and we just haven't found the other ones? I believe it's 13. Okay. Lucky number 13. Yes, exactly. The Wakanda Forever Celebration is in full swing in Disney California Adventure. Over in Adventure's campus, you can meet the new Black Panther as well as learn the ways of the Jabari tribe for M'Baku. The Black Panther Celebration Garden, located next to the Hyperion Theater, is a place to celebrate the Black Panther. A special lighting ceremony takes place each evening around 5.15 p.m. This looks so cool, and Tag, you're going to like die when you see this at night. I mean, I love some good lighting. It's all purple. It's all purple lit. Like the Celebration Gardens, all all different Ooh. purple lighting that's lit. It looks so, so cool. Now, I will admit I have not seen Wakanda forever yet myself, but it looks like from what I've seen you know, reported by my chat. I also watched an Ordinary Adventures video on this area. Nothing that's here is too big of a spoiler for those of us that haven't seen the movie yet. But it just looks so fun and so energetic. I'm excited about the food. There's one thing that's actually at the shawarma, the shawarma cart that I think you'd be really excited to try. Tag, let me see what it's called. It's the Wakandan Roasted Pork Wrap, which is spiced pork with black garlic sauce. And a chermula is available at the Shawarma Palace and Shawarma Palace, too. So Ordinary Adventures tried it. And I thought of you instantly because it is like garlic forward, apparently. Oh, good. You know how much you love garlic. Yeah, apparently the sauce is very garlicky and very delicious. I do love me some garlic. I'll tell you, purple, favorite color. And so the fact that there's all these Wakanda things that are purple, like I'm looking on the link we have in the show notes, I'm looking and see that they have some butterfly pea tea lemonade, yes. which, which is what's in the picture, right? With the purple on the top. That's mm-hmm. just, it looks so, I'm not even really a lemonade person, but I feel like I might want to try it. They can't be doing this to us, Teresa. We have <laughs> Festival of the Holidays. We have regular holiday food. We have this Wakanda food. What are they doing to us? So many good food options. So many good food options. How are we going to be able to try and eat all of this stuff? This is ridiculous. So the other fun thing, too, is if you head back to the Superstore, which is located back in Hollywood land, there is a display of some of the props and costumes from the Black Panther Wakanda Forever movie. So if you're a, a like movie buff and enjoy seeing those sorts of things, I thought that was really cool that they have it in the big super avengers campus store in the back there so and it's it looks like there's quite a few of them too so that's even it's not like there's because we saw what was it there was one thing i think in there from miss marvel but this is oh yeah multiple costumes like in the photo here from mice chat there's one two three four there's like five or six costumes just in this one photo that i'm looking at so very cool display This past weekend marked the start of the holidays at the Disneyland Resort, as well as the start of the Festival of the Holidays over in DCA. One of the highlights of this festival is all of the different specialty foods and drinks at all of the festival booths. I can't even, like, we got so excited. I got so excited last week just with the regular holiday foodie guy that I'm like, Tag, we need, the entire discussion topic needs to be devoted to this food because I'm just going to blabber on about it forever. And then as we got like looking through it and then tag started, you know, getting excited about all of it too. This brought me into it. Oh my gosh. Like I can't, there sounds, of course, you know, this was this past weekend was opening weekend. So we have been getting 
and seen some reviews of some of the foods. I, you know, the things that I've been seeing are kind of mixed. Not too many of the, like, there were a couple of places that we get our news sources from that weren't too excited about most of the offerings. And they were kind of saying things like, ah, just, you know, don't, don't bother getting a sip and savor pass this year. There's not enough things on here worth your while. And I just, I don't know if I believe that because every single I, one of these booths, I'm like, I want to try that. I want to try that. At Holloway, that. Holiday Duets, the Pork Belly Adobo, Can I've heard good that? reviews about. Yeah. Didn't, I know yeah, it's not new, that. but it's so good. Garlic fried rice with braised pork belly, chicharron pieces, and green mm-hmm. onions. Oh, mm-hmm. I remember it was so good. It melts in your mouth. Mm. The churro toffee cold brew, I want to say, is back as well, which, mm. oh my gosh, I think I got that two or three times last year. It was so, so good. There's also a, at the Twist on Tradition, there's this like guava melon Lassie, which is guava nectar, rock melon syrup, non fat yogurt, and honey garnished with cinnamon, whipped cream, and a honey flavored cereal. It sounds so interesting and so unique. That's something I want to try. I mean, our food list is ever growing. Of course, the link will be in our show notes. I feel like we can't spend too much time on this because it will be a discussion topic and mm-hmm. a half worth of stuff because there's just so many amazing different things to try. The Pacific Wharf Cappuccino Cart has a caramel toffee orchata cold brew, which also oh, sounds amazing. So I'm happy because last week I was a little disappointed that there weren't too many seasonal cold brews being offered on the holiday foodie list, but I'm happy that there's a couple being offered for the festival of the holidays. Anything that stands out to you tag? Well, I'm looking, well, what's on your must pork try belly, list. but the picture, yes. I think the picture that I'm looking at is the chocolate bourbon flavored tart made with yes. Twix cookie bar pieces, yes. layers of caramel and chocolate bourbon flavored mousse made with Twix cookie bar pieces. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah, that sounds the, really I mean, good. There's just what is so this many. now? There's a, a milk and cookies keys? hot. Ch- mm. There's a milk and cookies hot cocoa. I've heard is very good. Mm. I'm also interested. There's hot buttered rum at some of the booths. I've never tried that, but it sounds like it could be delicious. There's a Mrs. Claus hot cocoa macaron. So I know that that's going to be. On How the do list. you feel about the dolce de leche tamales at Tortilla? Jones? Those sound really interesting, and I yeah no those sound delicious. I've never had a dessert tamale before, but that oh my gosh, they sound very rich. It's uh, so I feel like I'd have to share it with someone. It's cinnamon, <laughs> evaporated milk, regular milk, cajeta de. <laughs> Salaya, I'm so sorry for butchering that. Vanilla extract, sugar, and cream cheese topped with pecans mm-hmm. and powdered sugar. Oh, yum, 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 yum! So many amazing things. So we have actually haven't announced this, but officially, Tag and I have booked our next trip. We will be there towards the end of December. So our mouths are watering and our towards lists are growing. The middle part of December in fairness. Yeah, middle part of December. Yeah, I guess it is the middle part of December. I I feel like it's the late part you of December. You say later and it sounds like we're going to be there for Christmas. We're not going to be there for I Christmas. I know. We're going to be there just before Christmas. So, yeah. um the weekend before Christmas is when we're going to be down there. But man, I wish we would have seen these lists of food before we booked our tickets. So that we could have extended our trip so that we would be able to make sure we could try all these things. Well, I think the reason we didn't have a longer trip was for blackout dates, really. It's true. But I'm going to pretend that that's not the reason because I just, we need more than three days in the parks to be able to eat our way through these (laughs) amazing food lists. (laughs) We're just going to be sitting there on the sidelines. (laughs) We're not going to be riding attractions. We're just going to be eating all day, walking from one place to the next, eating. (laughs) Well, oh, I can't if wait. your food list is as long as ours is, have no fear. The Sip and Saver Pass has returned. For fifty nine ninety nine. you can get eight coupons to use on food and non-alcoholic drinks around the festival. To get the best deal, we recommend using your tabs on some of the more expensive offerings. Like every And year. I did verify you do get your Magic Key discount as well oh, nice. with this. So using your Magic Key discount takes it down to like $54, $55 instead. So good deal. I think the Magic Key, we, there's also a separate taste or like eating area for the Magic Key holders. They did this in previous years. And there's a different lanyard that you get with your sip, that you get with your sip and saver pass if you're a Magic Key holder as well. So I did do the math. So if you're buying a sip and saver pass at full price, so you want to make sure that you're buying Using your to, your coupons or your tabs on things that are 
more than $7.50 to make sure that you're at least breaking even, if not, you know, getting, like Tag said, the bigger bang for your buck. So make sure you use your tabs on the expensive things. Usually things like the drinks are closer to like six-ish, maybe $7. So those are a little bit on the cheaper side. So if you've got a lengthy food list, don't use your tabs on the drinks and you save them for those more expensive dishes. So I'm very sad because oh. <laughs> I see a picture finally of an item that I saw on the list from our last story. Okay. And it is the hot chocolate churro. And the only thing that I don't like about this is that it's got this like spicy topping, which mm, yeah. the Disney food blog says it packs a punch. So it's definitely gonna be spicy. But the churro with the sauce and the marshmallows, that would be amazing. I wonder mm-hmm. if they can make one without putting the maybe the, the spicy Doesn't hurt sauce. To ask. Because let me just, I want to pull up the Disney Parks blog to give the explanation of what this actually is. It has hazelnut chocolate, a spicy chocolate streusel, that's the part I wouldn't want, and mini marshmallows. Yeah, you could probably ask to not have the streusel. Yeah. Oh, man. But we already have so much food. (laughs) Anyway. I know. We're going to have to, like, buckle down and make our list, check it twice, see what we're going to, see what's going to what's going to make the cut and what's going to have to go cuz unfortunately yeah. there's just not enough time to try it all. <laughs> well, with a new festival comes new merchandise. We reported last week on the Festival of the Holidays pins that had been spotted. Well, now festival apparel has been added to the mix. There is a black and gold spirit jersey for $80, a dark red zippo hoodie for 64.99. There's also a mug and a themed cookie jar. This hoodie looks pretty nice. There's a, uh, well, they say it's a jacket, but it looks like a hoodie. It's got a yeah, decent little yeah. logo on it. <laughs> Always colorful, very inclusive of all the different holidays that are being celebrated around this time of year. So, I don't know. Festival of the Holidays isn't something that I feel like I need a ton of merch and stuff from, but that one hoodie does look kind of nice. I'm, I'm most excited about the pins that we reported on last week, just because I'm a pin collector. But the spirit jersey, I mean, black and gold is just such a classic beautiful combo and it's another fun combo to kind of celebrate the holiday season without being too Christmassy or too you know it's a very I think it's a very inclusive color scheme I I guess would be a good way to say it versus everything else we see is like like we were talking I think last week it's either red or green or white or blue because like white and blue for wintery stuff so I think black and gold's a really fun way to celebrate the holidays plus i just love how all of the different bright colors that are in the rest of that spirit jersey really pop against the black yeah it does look pretty nice it's just not something that i need to you know i was just talking about this i came down to my office at my home office the other night and i was like oh i think i'm going to spend a little bit of time straightening up my office and i looked at my shelving that that is behind me and I have too much stuff. I told James, I said, I think I need to start weeding through and paring down some of my stuff. I said, I don't know. Should I sell it or give it away or do something with some of the stuff that I have? Or should I just put it in a box? If I put it in a box, am I ever going to pull it out again? And coming from James, even, he said, put it in a box. It'll give you the opportunity to rotate it around Mm -hmm. uh, when you want to do stuff. So so I just got to be mindful of future purchases that I'm going to make because I'm already having a shelving issue with that. So... (laughs) Well, this is something that won't take up any shelf space. The Festival of the Holidays not only has great food, but there's a ton of live entertainment. The entertainment is what brings this festival to life. There is a ton of options. Of course, we've got Viva Navidad, the Holiday Toy Drummers, just Santa. Just, you can go of meet course, Santa. Santa. Elf games. There's some really fun and different entertainment that happens at the Festival of the Holidays as well. Um, mm-hmm. Blue 13 Dance Company does Bollywood dancing. Uh, we have the mariachi divas that put their own spin on classic holiday songs. Mostly kosher. Oh my gosh, they were so fun. We saw them last year at the Festival yes. of the Holidays. But they honor Hanukkah with a blend of music, including like jazz, Latin, and rock. They are just like balls of energy and it was like infectious they were i could have sat there and watched them all night so so much fun so i'm excited to see them again the fat cat swingers is big and brassy holiday music we didn't see them last year i've heard really great things about them so i really hope we can catch them this year and then there's also acapella singers that are celebrating kwanzaa and they're called the mistletoes you can find all of these people all over dca in, in kind of like they have different stages there's kind of a main stage down by the World of Color Lagoon. There's a stage on the Sonoma Terrace. Of course, there's a stage back 
in the Paradise oh, Gardens. The Paradise Gardens area. Let's see who else is there. Oh, Tina and the Sounds of Celebration are also there. I actually just saw a, a video of them and so much fun. Vern actually like asked me who I was listening to and made me play it back again because they just were again full of energy. And so I like I'm just really excited about all this. Yes, the yeah. food, but man, the entertainment is just like top notch during this festival. Good opportunity to grab some food and sit mm-hmm. and watch something while you're eating. Obviously. It's- it's amazing to me because when I think of the Festival of the Holidays, all I think about is the food booths and the entertainment. Honestly, yes, there are some fantastic attractions in DCA, but those are like so far in the back of my mind in comparison to being able to experience these things because they're just they're limited time offerings and they're so fun and they do such a good job. And I don't know how these performers do it because every time we see them, it's just like they're like putting on like a 15 out of 10 performance. It's just incredible. So (laughs) I just, I can't wait. I just can't wait. Well, Tag, have no fear because the perfect holiday present is here. We have previously reported that a reindeer sipper would be available this holiday season, but we now have our first look. This sipper is shaped like the head of one of the reindeer from the Christmas fantasy parade, with his tongue sticking out and all, the reindeer zipper is available at select locations for 1979. When I saw this photo, I could not stop laughing. And I'm sorry, Tag, but I think I need to get you one of these for Christmas because it's so ridiculous. It is so <laughs> ridiculous. So, it's so funny. I love him. He's so it goofy. Is, yeah, it reminds... <laughs> okay, so there's a couple stories here. First of all, the fact that its tongue is sticking out is what yes. makes it look so ridiculous. But also... I don't know. I like so locally here in the Midwest, we have this thing along the river that's called the rotary lights that like are millions of lights. And a few years ago, when I worked for the news station, we went to watch them tear it down after New Year's. And they have these giant reindeer. And one of them's like head, because they were in the process of taking it down, one of their heads was like to the side and just looked goofy. And that's what this sipper reminds me of. And I remember laughing at that and I'm laughing at this and it's just crazy. Now, have we heard this and the musical one that we reported on last week? Have these, are these still in stock or have they? They are still in stock. So as they've far done as a I have seen, good they job, have not then. sold out. Yep. So for those of you that may not understand, why the reindeer looks like this and why his tongue is sticking yeah, out. Yeah, why? Back in like the 80s, I want to say, th- this is what the reindeer in the parade looked like. They had oh. their tongues sticking out like this. The current version of the reindeer do not have these goofy tongues sticking out to the side. So this is kind of, this is a throwback. I think it was the 80s. I'm going to have to look it up to see exactly when it You're was, saying this, yeah. and now it kind of rings a bell that that's what they look like. Yep, yep. That's what that's what the reindeer used to look like. Okay. So, oh my gosh, I just love it. It's so fun. Oh yeah, found a picture right here. It is. Uh, well, there was a Walt Disney World reindeer, so, but I assume they were at Disneyland as well. And this was in 1999. But I'm guessing for Disneyland, it was probably back in the 80s. But that's the first picture I saw of this was this Disney World postcard that if I did a quick. A quick internet search for, so I put that in our chat that we are live streaming into right now, just so people can kind of see the goofiness um, (laughs) of this. I'm glad that you pointed that out, because I was wondering where the tongue situation was coming from, and (laughs) now that makes a little more sense. How fun. A large stage is currently set up in front of Sleeping Beauty Castle. This is for the Christmas special airing on ABC. In past years, some of the taping was done during park hours and guests were treated to mini concerts from some popular artists. However, this year, most of the taping will be done after park hours. The one exception will be the taping of the Christmas Fantasy Parade. A date has not been announced, but should take place in the next week or so. So this, I don't, I, I was not sure if we should include this or not, but I decided to because well, A, it explains to everyone why there's a big giant stage in the middle of, <laughs> like, in the middle of where everyone likes to take their photos at Sleeping Beauty Castle. But the other thing is, this is, it's interesting to me, and I'm sure there's a reason for it, but it's a little, it's a little sad to me that they're not doing this during park hours anymore, because we even had Weekly Tears that happened to be part of the filming and part of these little mini concerts that happened. Who was it? Gwen Stefani, I think, 
recently did, I think it was last year, performed in front of like Small World. And of course, they have other artists that are performing at other Disney park locations, you know, in the Animal Kingdom, of course, Magic Kingdom. And yeah, so it was just a little sad to me. And there, oh, and there was somebody performed in Galaxy's Edge last year in Disneyland as well, I believe. But it was just it was just kind of sad that this is not open to the public anymore because it was kind of a fun little, if you happen to be there at the right day at the right time, you could be a part of this fun TV special and be part of a, you know, a live video audience type thing for this. So I thought it, I thought it was a really cool, really fun thing. So I, I was a little sad that it's no longer a spontaneous perk. Yeah, you know, it added kind of a, a bit of, you know, you could show up and bam, something was happening that that maybe you weren't aware of or something that was like included in your park ticket. So that kind of makes it fun and exciting. I remember we were there. Was it last year when we were there? We saw some of the taping of the they were parade, taping the, I think it was. Yes, the parade when we were there. Exactly. So, I mean, I'm glad that that's still going on, but it does it does seem like kind of a bummer that they won't be recording the performances. It'll be interesting to see when the Christmas parade airs. It'll be interesting to see what that looks like without a... I mean, I guess they'll have a crowd of cast members, maybe, or... Maybe. Okay, I'd be okay with it if, if it, this is now something open that cast members get to to participate in. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool, too. You have me second-guessing if the reindeer were actually at Disneyland or not now. Nope. Here we go. Disneyland. They were in Disneyland? Yep. And you could tell, because the Matterhorn's in the background. Oh you my were... gosh, that was actually the 50s. Well, they probably hung around for a long time. But look like his eyes are crossed. Like, they were just goofy, goofy looking reindeers originally. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, why do the deer have to look so <laughs> silly, I guess? but I don't know. I feel like they need something in between what they currently are. Like, they look a little bit too perfect now. But the like that one, originals looked like too goofy. We need some some fun mix in between these. Sure, sure. Okay, well, thank you for verifying that i wasn't crazy and making up that they had in fact been in disneyland at some point reminder for all weekly tears these questions can feel like a high-speed roller coaster type ride in the dark with self high fives sudden drops and stumps follow all pre-launch procedures including stowing hats glasses and all loose possessions in the cargo pouch located directly in front of you Welcome to Trivia Land. How are we feeling tonight? You got some great answers bottled up in your heads and ready to spill them out? Hopefully. I hope so. All right. Excellent. I, I feel the listeners sent you some good ones that are going to make you think, but they weren't too tough on you. So let's find out how <laughs> we did tonight. All right. Or Fingers how you're going to do tonight. Yes. All right. So your first listener submitted question from listener Ethan K. In the soon to be rethemed attraction Splash Mountain, how many times does Br'er Bear appear? Oh. Bonus points if you know where in the ride it is. Like, well, he's hanging. His, his full self or just part of his self? Because there's, yes, the hanging Br'er Bear, but then there's also the, like, his butt that's sticking out of one of the holes as you dip under one of the drops. I think that would count. The, the specific wording is does he appear? So I will accept. Do you just see his butt? <laughs> I will even accept. Are you aware of his presence? Oh well, then the at the beginning because he's like count? snoring in the in the yeah, thing. You don't see him, but you can hear him I snoring. I said I will accept. You are okay. aware of his presence. So we're gonna say snoring. Yep. We're gonna say uh, the butt. Yeah, we're going to say him hanging. hanging from the ceiling. And there's at least one more time at the end where he's like right at the end, right after you go through the uh, the room where the laughing place room, it's him and the fox and there's the, the alligators like chewing on the fox's oh, yep. tail. Yep. Uh, I think that's it. So four times. All right. So your answers are you hear him snoring, you see his butt sticking out, the fox and the crocodile, and he's hanging. Is that your final answer? Yes. All mm -hmm. right. Your second listener submitted question. Submitted by listener Kavehi S. In celebration of Magic Happens returning soon, let's see if you can fill in the blanks of the first few lines of the parade song. <laughs> this is You know, we've never seen this before. <laughs> I didn't write the question. <laughs> Thanks, Kavehi. <laughs> I, I have some hope, Tag. I have some hope. This is the blank. Moment. Here's what you came for. This is the blank blank was made for. 
oh no. Oh my goodness. <laughs> See, I didn't even really listen to the song because I had listened to it at D23 and thought it was just okay. And then thought, well, maybe when I go see it in person, it'll be better. And then we never saw it in person. Shoot. Uh, okay, nope. say, can you say it again? I feel like a a terrible fan. I feel like I know All we right. didn't see it in person, but I still feel Once like we again, should know this. This is the blank. Here's what you came for. This is the blank. Blank was made for. Do we have any words that repeat? Negative. Dang it. <laughs> I feel this like magic blank. has to be one of the blank words, was right? Made for. Right? Doesn't magic have to be one of the words? Like the that magic is made for the moment. This is the. Well, it, I'm the pretty sure it's again. this is the moment. This but, is the moment. But I don't know what the second one is that magic was made for. Oh, mm. this is the is. Mm, is there, mm, this is weird. I don't know why I have this word in my head. Anthem. This is the moment. This is the anthem. Mm. Mm. I feel so bad. Like, we should know this. We've never seen it in person. I'd feel bad if we saw it. Like, if this was asking about phantasmic lyrics, I'm there. I'm I'm going with moment, anthem, and magic. In that order? Okay. This is the anthem. This is the moment magic was made for. Is that your final answer? Uh, I don't know. I, I Two of the words I concur with Teresa on, but I don't know if anthem is the right thing. Well, what do you think it is? I don't know. Do you think Your it's... guess sounds pretty okay, but... <laughs> I can hear the beat in my head. Does that count for bonus points if we can hum it? <laughs> do, yes, do, do, totally do, does. Do. <laughs> do, 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 do. Dang it, now I really want to see this parade. No, the only the only one that gets in my head is for some reason I have like... Uh... Is it paint? I think it's paint the night that I have stuck in my head. When can we do this again? Oh, yeah, oh, but that's oh. not the part I have. I've got some other part of it. But yeah, are you gonna? Are you are you hitching on my anthem wagon? Sure, I'll <laughs> hitch on your anthem wagon. <laughs> All right. So anthem moment and magic. Question number three, submitted by listener Brooke A. Who were the original project directors of the Main Street Electrical Parade? Oh, no. I should know this, but I don't. Man, we're very, like, entertainment-focused. Very parade-focused uh, today. I don't know. The original know project either. directors? Well, this is what I thought was your gimme. This? No, I'm stumped. Uh, this was a half a gimme. Oh. This is what I thought. Um, you have high hopes for us, Vern. It's 50 years old. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I have no answer, Vern. That is my final answer. Yeah, stumped. Stumped. Final answer. All right. Question number four, your final regular round question, submitted by listener Kevin M. At the fire station in Main Street, USA, what two names are on the horse stalls? <laughs> these are good. We've read these. I remember us going into the fire station and looking at them. Vern's looking at me like, What? Why don't you know these? He, apparently, he thought this was our gimme. I t- maybe I've Walt and Roy. This before Walt and Roy. I, I knew probably this not. one. I, I I'm gonna say know. Walt and Roy, but I don't think that's right. Walt and Roy. Yeah, on the horse stalls. <laughs> you think they named the fire station horses Walt and no, Roy? No, but it's the only names that I have. These um, are the actual stalls actually used by the first two horses that pulled the original fire station wagons when they first opened the park. Yeah. Spark. I'm sorry. I and fail. Cole. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Spark and coal. Yep. Final answer. <laughs> Very wow. sad final answer, but yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and your bonus question tonight. We need it. <laughs> submitted by listener Kate A. The 20 dancing cars of Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters are all Luigi's cousins from Carsoli. Oh, no. How many of the cousins <laughs> oh, no. can you name? <laughs> uh... N- I don't think I can name any. <laughs> Me either. I don't know. If I'm just I trying knew, to think. Of I knew like, they were his cousins. I don't know if I knew they had names. Are they on I the think license I'm trying plates? to think of like Italian names. 20? 20 names though. Mario and Luigi. No, with Luigi's. Yeah, my, well, I guess Luigi could have a cousin Luigi. Yeah. Oh, man. That's all, I'm, all I'm thinking of is the, the girls' names in the tiki room. Hello, Suzette. Colette. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. How many of those are Italian? Wrong. No, it was just a list of names. Yeah, you went with the two French names. Yeah. 
<laughs> Mimi, Fifi. I'm trying to think of. You're thinking like Super Mario Brothers. Mario I'm thinking, and Luigi. Well, I'm also trying to think of our previous exchange student Simone's. I'm trying to think of like his family's, like what their names are. Dang, I don't know. Because there's Celeste, but I don't think that that's going to be one. I think his dad's name is just Michael or Mikel. How long do we want to try and struggle through this? You Giovanni. 16 to go. Giovanni. And that's where I'm stopping. I got nothing else. Dang you, Kate. Shaking my Good fist in the air. question. This is this. I'm really interested about this one because I knew I knew they were the cousins, but I never paid enough attention to know they all had names. Are there any questions tonight you're not interested in? I think you're interested in all of them tonight. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I've given up. I, I, I can't name 20. There's no way. Just think stereotypical Italian. You've seen West Side Story, right? Oh, Maria. <laughs> well, what was the male lead? <laughs> Maria fell in love with... Tony. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Tony. That's a great one. Maria, Tony. We'll, we'll add on your Mario. Or if, if your first name in America was Carl. Carlos. It, but Italian, like Carlo. Oh, Carlo. Oh, Carlo. That's a good one. Especially for a car. I know somebody named Giancarlo. Yeah. Carlo. Or, uh, the, the Godfather's first name was... Michael. That was his Don. Son. Don. Don Corleone. <laughs> that was his title. <laughs> We're but terrible. His, but this. his full name was Vito Corleone. Vito. That's a good one, too. You think that might be a good name? I think okay, that's also a that good name. I love how Vern is just <laughs> He just feels so, so bad for point. us tonight. He just feels so bad that he's just like... I gotta. All right. I gotta so help. your guesses are Mario, Luigi, Celeste, Michael, Giovanni, Tony, Carlotta, Carlo, and Vito. Are those your final answers? I mean, that's sure. as good as we're gonna get. All right. Well, listeners, that how was do sad. you think they did? How did you do listening at home? Stick around until after the discussion topic, and we can all find out together. Well, for this week's discussion topic, Tag and I are going to talk about our kind of last minute trip that we took at the end of last month. I will be very honest. I had taken time off because the plan, the original plan was to head out to to California to attend the Disney Anna fall event. However, we did not buy plane tickets early enough and they were crazy, crazy, crazy expensive. So we decided it was not the, the ticket prices were so high and not worth what the long weekend that we had planned. Yeah. Um, but for whatever reason, I never actually took, unrequested those days off from work i'll be really honest i was doing something for social media and i got myself down a rabbit hole which then resulted in me saying hey tag we still have that time off what do you think about driving down to marceline missouri and visiting walt's hometown museum and checking out all of the different historical sites around walt disney and, and his family and marceline so that's exactly what we did. It was like, what, a six, seven hour car ride from where we live. So it wasn't yeah. too bad. But it was so much fun. It was such, I don't know, we'll get into it. But it was just, I enjoyed it far more than I thought I was going to. I am excited to go back and experience more things in Marceline. So much What fun. else is there to experience there, Teresa? That is the question. Um, I could have just like hung out at Walt's Barn forever. It was so peaceful and just, yeah, anyways, we'll, we'll get into it. I thought it was cool. Yeah, just so you're aware, I just wanted to show, uh, to actually calculate it. It was about a little over, just over seven hours from where we live in Wisconsin. It's basically almost straight down from us. If you want to know where Marceline is, you may not know where it is. It's basically Kansas City is, if you're looking at like a Google map, Kansas City's to the left, St. Louis is to the right, and it's a little bit north of between those two. If you go all the way up to Minneapolis and come straight down, it's basically right there. So what was amazing to me on our drive down there was, well, first of all, not Marceline related, but I do want to mention it. We stopped at this great place in, uh, where did we stop? In Cedar Rapid? No, we went over to Des Moines, didn't we? Mm-hmm. Yep. And we had, what was it? Zombie? Zombie Burger is what the restaurant Zombie called. Burger, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. It's like a themed burger joint based around like zombies. And because we were kind of on a time crunch and wanted to get there, we didn't get to eat in the main kind of restaurant area that Teresa had eaten at a different location before and uh, was really kind of themed and cool over there. We still got to see some cool stuff. They had some neat themed 
like movie posters that were all changed to zombies. I have a picture in my book here. Do you remember what the Toy Story one was? I feel like our audience would oh. enjoy the name of Toy Story. Toy Gory is what it was. Toy Gories. The toys yes, are back toy gory. from the dead. Yes, and they were like zombie Toy Story characters it was very very fun very clever yes and what was it oh and in, instead of disney pixar it was destroy and puncture right so we had some pretty good burgers there i thought their cheese curds were pretty amazing they gave us so <laughs> many cheese curds for those of you who aren't from the midwest it's basically fried cheese very good not like a mozzarella stick though but so, yes yeah, so we went down to marceline and the, the yeah. other thing i just want to talk about with the trip down there quick it's in the middle of nowhere <laughs> really yeah yeah it was it was, you know, a small town, I want to say, populations, just above 2,000 folks that live in Marceline. But it was really interesting because we drove into town, what was it, like 10, 11 o'clock at night. So it was late. Yeah. But it was almost, it was so still. We were like the only car on the road. And we parked, we stayed at a Airbnb. We parked, got in. The Airbnb was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Would definitely stay there again. And it was right on their main street. So that was super cool. We were within walking distance of all of everything. (laughs) Yeah. All of the big things. We did decide to drive to where Walt's where Walt's boyhood home and where the barn and the dreaming tree were all located. We could have walked if we wanted to. It would have been probably about like a 30 minute walk if we would have walked, but still. It was so great to be within walking distance. In fact, right across from where we stayed was the Uptown Theater, which is actually where a couple of Disney movies premiered. So, I mean, we were like across the street from Disney history. It was so, so cool. And Teresa did a great job finding the Airbnb because my concern was that we weren't going to be able to stay in Marceline, that we'd have to stay elsewhere because there's not really... A hotel? There's not like, yeah, there's not like a Best Western or a Holiday Inn or like any yeah. big chain hotels. There is a a small local hotel or motel that was there, but they only had, what was it? You could get, the rooms weren't very big. I think it was just one one queen size bed yeah, per room. Yeah, we would have so had to share getting, a bed. Yep, or get two rooms. So instead of doing that, we found an Airbnb that had two beds big space and like i said it was within walking distance that was the best and it was so it was a great experience to be honest it really was it really was so back to the uptown theater so one of the movies that premiered there was the spirit of mickey which of course was starring mickey mouse and the other one i want to say was yep the great locomotive was was the other movie that premiered there and that actually opened on Oh, in 1956, Walt and Roy Disney held the Midwest premiere of their feature film, The Great Locomotive Chase, in that theater, in the Uptown Theater. So they personally greeted everyone at the door, and Walt and Roy took the stage before the movie started, and the children of Marceline sang the Mickey Mouse song. So I thought that was really cool. So not only did the movie, you know, was there a movie premiere there, but Walt and Roy were also present for the premiere. Yeah, it was so neat to kind of see this place that that Walt grew up in and of course mm-hmm. Roy grew up in and and the fact that there was this theater there that like honestly I didn't even know that they had done any type of premiere there and I was very mm-hmm. surprised to find that out so really cool to be there with that kind of history and stuff there and like Teresa said it was so quiet and pristine when we got there and it was just I don't know it was just amazing it's it's mm-hmm. such a you know you think a small town like what there was just a vibe about the town that was just welcoming and Mm -hmm. relaxing and just amazing the other neat thing is so they're very proud of their um connection with walt and with roy and so they had all of these different so of course the walt disney hometown museum is located in marceline we will get to that but in addition to that there is all of these other places around the little town that have you know different connections and different stories with Walt and with Roy. And I thought it was so cool. So the Uptown Theater, for example, the information that I just gave you, the theater itself is not open currently. We weren't able to actually go inside and see and look around or like take a tour. But they they still want to share their story. A lot of these old buildings in the downtown area have these plaques on them to kind of tell the story of, you know, what was significant about it or why it's important to Walt and Roy's story. So I thought that was really, really cool. So we we were able to do a tour of the town almost on our own. And later we'll get into it, but they also have a an interactive QR type tour that you can do around town too that has different recorded things about different 
various locations around town that, you know, you can listen to the recordings and hear the story of why it's important as well. Super, super cool. Yeah. And like Teresa said, everything in Marceline was pretty walkable. So we checked in, we went to bed, it was late. We got up the next day, we went and had some breakfast at the Ma Vicks Corner Cafe. Yep. And this place was great. By the way, there was a couple, you know, waitresses working there. You could tell that like, you know, they were quick, they were efficient, they had really mm-hmm. inexpensive food. It was so cool to be in that space with these with with the townsfolk basically. And it was so funny because it was us and sitting across from us was another obviously like out of town person because <laughs> they were wearing their Disney stuff and so that was kind of kind of interesting but uh i thought the food was good and well priced oh, and the service so was so happy great. with my breakfast i had biscuits and gravy with a side of bacon and sweet tea to drink it was oh my gosh so good it was so so good the sweet tea was good i had some sweet tea mm-hmm. uh, didn't i have some sweet tea i think i had some sweet tea later and it was very good. yep you had sweet tea later and then the other cool thing was the building that mavix corner cafe is currently in also had one of those fun fact plaques and has a connection to main street usa so then the building that was just behind it was the confectionery which i we were actually trying to figure this out i think Ma Vix is part of the confectionery that used to be there. We'll kind of talk about there is a very famous ice cream sundae that you get at Ma Vix that's like locally famous to Marceline. Mm-hmm. But the confectionery was built in 1905. It was a favorite stop with anyone with a sweet tooth, of course. But when designing downtown Disney, which is adjacent to Disneyland, the Disney company included Marceline's confectionery in its themed area in downtown Disney in honor of the confectionery that used to be located in downtown Disney. I thought that was a fun little connection to downtown Disney, Mm -hmm. uh, not Main Street USA, like I had said earlier. And in that same kind of block, there was another placard for like, you know, the next building down. There was the Allen Hotel, which was built in 1906. It was brand new when Roy Disney remembered the entire family eating out in the dining room there. And then when they built... Disneyland and Main Street at Disneyland, they had a replica of this building and it is called the Hotel Marceline in Disneyland. So I thought that Mm -hmm. was really, really cool. After breakfast, we were kind of doing our research ahead of time and learned that there is a special cancellation stamp that you can get at the post office in Marceline. The other cool thing. What's a cancellation stamp, Teresa? So a cancellation stamp is uh, basically the, the stamp that they put over your postage stamp that states what date it was mailed and they have a special one since this is the walt disney post office but the the cool thing about the this location was after walt's death in december of 1966 the citizens of marceline actually lobbied the united states postal department to issue a stamp in Walt's honor. And they agreed to issue the stamp, but they weren't the only town that wanted to be have the dedication ceremony or have the stamp. They were against Burbank, California, Kansas City, Missouri, Anaheim, California, and Chicago. They were trying to be the first location to have the stamp issued. And Marceline was chosen to be the location of the the ceremonies. So the Disney family and other guests arrived for the ceremonies via the Santa Fe Railway. And the United States Postal Department originally ordered 120,000 stamps, but the unusual demand for the stamps resulted in the total production, this is crazy, in 153,015,000 stamps. Wow. That is a lot more than than they were planning. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, the- like, I'm just... Yeah, that's that's a fraction. I was trying to do some math here, and that is a ridiculous <laughs> right. a amount lot. of stamps there than they initially planned for. Yeah, Holy jeez. Yeah. A wild amount of stamps. But the stamp was issued f- at that post office September 11th, 1968. So that's what makes this post office so special is that it's like the Walt it's Walt the Walt Disney Post Office. And now we have to talk about the first outdoor <gasps> Marcellinian person that we yes. met. So we're we're oh, going to go to the great. post office and we went into the post office because we, we didn't thought, even get in yet. Oh, that's right, we didn't get in yet. <laughs> we were gonna go into the post office and one of the police officers from Marceline showed up. Yeah, it and was, was like going the local in, sheriff. 
yeah, came up and talked to us about Marceline a little bit. He was the first person that we heard say Marceline. So that is mm-hmm. how it is pronounced down there. This gentleman was wonderful. He was so nice and oh, welcoming. He was amazing. Gave us a lot of cool information. Um, we ended up running into him a couple other times, <laughs> and he was always in a great mood and kind of. I mean, if you think of a town that has two thousand people in it, you know the sheriff probably doesn't have too much to do. So he kind of. We saw him frequently driving around and patrolling. You know, like like oh, you yeah. should. But he always had time to kind of s- sit and talk with people, and he joked with us a little bit later on because we were taking some photos at the museum, and he pulled up and said, "Do you got a permit for photo taken?" <laughs> Yeah. Do you have your do you have your photography permit with you? And I just laughed. I said, you probably should sell those with the amount of photos people take around here. And he just right? giggled and drove off. He was so much fun. I wish we would have caught his name because, yeah. yeah, he was great. Oh, like if we go back, I want to find him and be like, hey, <laughs> I don't know if he remembers us. He's probably that kind and friendly to everyone. But he was That's he true. made a great impression on both of us. He was so fun. But after Going to the post office and learning, oh, they don't actually sell any postcards or things here that we would want them to stamp. That's not just a generic happy birthday greeting card. We decided to go across the park to the the hometown museum. Before we got there, though, while we were walking, we actually accident. I we didn't even know this existed, but I was so tickled that this was here. As all of us Disneyland fans know, there is one attraction that was taken out of a Disney park and used for kind of public use. And that, of course, is the Midget Autopia, which used to live in Disneyland and Walt and Roy gifted to the city of Marceline. And it went in this park, which now I feel bad. I can't remember the name of this park. It is Ripley Square or Ripley Park. Ripley, yep. So it was gifted and set up in Ripley Park. Unfortunately, the Midget Autopia is no longer there it's no longer operational and tag and i were being nerds and trying to look looking at like satellite views because we're like well can we see where the track used to be or you know we didn't even know if there was any sort of remnants well even better than like a hint of the past is there is a midget autopia walking track which was officially dedicated in september of 2019 and it's the coolest thing it's just the paved paved walkway and it, it does all the little loops and turns just like the Autop- the Midget Autopia track would have done. It still has the original, there was kind of like a barn that you drove the cars through. That's still there. And it also had the kind of the, the queue area or the waiting area with the Midget Autopia sign kind of on the side of it. So even better, we were hoping that maybe we would see like a little glimpse of the past. But they did this really cool and really unique thing to kind of preserve that history in a a fun and new way. Oh, yeah. And this park is really amazing. It's got, there's like a lagoon with like a bridge that goes over Mm -hmm. it. That's really amazing. There's a train engine that's parked, you know, in there that I think it's at Santa Fe and and Disneyland, didn't it on it? You probably have a photo of it. Yes. Yeah. So super, super neat. I don't know. This town, I did not expect to enjoy this town as much as I did, but I didn't expect it to have... I knew there was history here. I did not expect there to be history every couple of feet, though. Like, that was the thing that was so cool to me was it's not just, oh, well, here's his boyhood home. And well, here's one, you know, like a couple of things. Oh, no, it was like almost every it felt it wasn't. But it felt like every building had some sort of story or some sort of connection to Walt, which was just Mm -hmm. way more than I was expecting. Way, way more. The other thing that. I was very pleasantly surprised with was the hometown museum. For some reason, I had in my head that the hometown museum was, you know, just not, how do I want to say this? I didn't think it was going to be very large or have like just tons and tons of stuff in it. I thought it was just going to be kind of this nice little thing that had a couple of pieces of Walt's history with Marceline. And that was going to be, you know, that, but holy buckets, were we wrong? First of all, it's not just one room and it's not just one level. It was, There was two very large areas in the bottom, and then there was a whole second level. I could not believe the amount of stuff that they had there. Yes, of course, they had all sorts of different things that were tied with Walt's history with the town of Marceline, but there was all sorts of other things and other history in that museum as well that had been gifted to the museum by all sorts of different donors and benefactors, and it was just, it was really, really incredible. I could have spent 
far more time in that museum than we did because it was just so much information. Like, it was almost information overload. There was just so much there. It was so, yes. so cool. Yeah, there was a, just a ton of stuff. I took a gajillion photos. But I would recommend definitely go see this place. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Yeah, there was just a ton. You know, one of the things that comes up a lot, especially there was, like, a famous, like, auction, one of those auction shows where they like you bring in stuff and they tell you what it's worth or whatever and one of the things that they always said was difficult was finding things with walt's actual signature on it Mm -hmm. because he used to have animators and people at the company sign his signature for him well i have to imagine that some of the things we saw in this museum were actually him because there were letters to friends of his that i don't think he would have somebody just sign there's one letter that I'm looking at right now that in 1956, when they came to visit Marceline, there was Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, uh, Rush Johnson, lent their home to Walt when he was there. And so there's a note saying it was very kind and generous and signed Walt Disney. So very, very cool to see this history and see these actual artifacts that Walt touched or wrote and I don't know. It's kind of a it's kind of interesting to see into someone's life like this where mm-hmm. there's like Western Union telegrams, there's you know, pictures and articles and stuff from when he came to visit and about the school that he went to and when they came and dedicated the swimming pool. Like there's just all of these things that's just so cool to see in person and we would never have thought of there was his chair from when he went to school and the bell that was in the schoolhouse like i don't know so it, neat yeah honestly blew my mind it was I, I can't even it's hard for me to put into words how much how many different stories and how much history is located within the, i mean the building itself this is the coolest thing the building itself was actually the first building that walt as a young child would have seen and entered when he first got to Marceline. It's the old train station. So when he stepped off the train to start his new life with his family in Marceline, he walked through what is now the museum gift shop. I mean, just so much history. It was just fascinating. I You need to spend at least a half a day in there, if not longer. Tag is a, Tag and I are different museum people. I yes. could just sit in there like, Especially with it being Disney stuff, I could have sat in there for hours just soaking it all in, whereas Tag's kind of a flyby and I'm going to take pictures and look at the stuff and the details later. But some of the cool things that really struck me that I was not expecting to see, there was an entire room dedicated to Walt's sister, Ruth. And Ruth is actually a big reason that the museum exists today because it was Ruth's personal collection that she donated to the museum that is what what started and what kind of created the museum. So without without her generosity in sharing this story and sharing these memories with the people of Marceline, the museum, I don't know if the museum would exist today in the same capacity because that's kind of the core and really the heart of where it all started. But so there was an entire room dedicated to her. There was all these really cool letters that Walt had typed and written to Ruth about all sorts of different things, you know, whether it was congratulating her on a marriage or, you know, some, you know, all these personal letters. But the thing that was neat is depending on when he wrote them, the studio letterhead that he used had whatever movie it was that they were working on. So there's one here that's the letterhead is Walt Disney's Peter Pan. It has all sorts of characters from Peter Pan on it. The other one's Walt Disney's Sleeping Beauty, Walt Disney's Mary Poppins, Walt Disney's 101 Dalmatians, Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, all these really cool, really unique letterheads. But the like piece in this area that just was the most amazing and just like kind of had to pitch myself that we were looking at was there was a TV set up in the middle of the room. And we're like, oh, that's cool. They've got an old TV set up. Oh, and they're playing, you know, the Disneyland opening day broadcast on this TV. So Tag and I actually took a minute and sat down and watched, gosh, I don't know, probably five, 10 minutes worth of it. And then decided to kind of, you know, continue on in the museum. Well, after we were done sitting there watching, I noticed that there was a plaque on top of the TV. And so I took a look at it. Well, this TV set was Ruth was Ruth's TV set. So Walt had invited Ruth to come out to the opening of Disneyland and invited her family. She declined, though, because she wasn't a fan of crowds, that sort of thing. Well, Walt wanted to make sure that she still got to experience the opening of his Disneyland. So he sent her money to make sure that she could purchase a television set so that she could watch the live broadcast. And so the television set that was in the middle of this room that we were sitting and watching 
was the television set that Ruth had purchased with money from Walt to watch the opening day broadcast. Now, of course, I don't think that the screen that we were looking at was the exact same screen, but the set itself was right. the, the original television set. And I th- want to say that the rug that was in the kind of area that we were was also, you know, Ruth's rug from her from her living room at the time. I just like, that was incredible to me. Did you think that you'd be watching the no. TV that <laughs> Walt no. had bought his sister to make sure she could watch the open? I mean... And I didn't even think that it incredible. was until I read the plaque, too. I was like, No, what? I thought it was just a generic, like, oh, yep, that looks like it's the correct time period of a TV set. Like, that's, you know, oh, it was amazing. Just amazing. So, honestly, when, when you're there, look at everything, because you just don't know what it is that you're going to be looking at. So, I just want to reiterate what you just said. I found the picture that I took of this, and I think I think it's good enough that I should read it quick, just because it talks about the foundation quick of the of oh, yeah, the. Yeah museum. So the placard said, every museum starts with a gift. Our gift came from the Disney family. During her lifetime, Ruth Flora Disney Beecher amassed a considerable collection of personal artifacts that showcase the achievements of her two world-famous brothers. From the earliest days in Marceline, Ruth relied on her siblings for both friendship and advice. The letters you'll see throughout this museum are intimate and personal and show a loving family relationship that lasted a lifetime. Before Ruth Flora Disney Beecher passed away in 1995, she requested that her collection be displayed in Marceline, the one location on the planet that seemed to resonate the strongest with her family. The 2,000-plus artifacts that you see today have become the rich foundation of the Walt Disney Hometown Museum. I mean, just It's true. There's all these letters. bumps from you about this, because it was amazing. yeah. Yeah. Super, I don't know. I didn't expect all of that, but... No, cool. I don't know what I was expecting, but that completely exceeded all my expectations. I can mm-hmm. tell you that right now. I was hoping just for like little glimpses and and we were like, I mean, it was so much stuff. It was so, so cool. Well, we had so much to talk about with our trip to Marceline that we are going to continue this on next week's episode. So tune in next week for the conclusion of our trip to Marceline. Looks like we're coming in for a landing, gang. But please stay listening until trivia comes to a stop. The menus can walk to the nearest exit. Thanks for listening to the 8th Wonder of the World, Dio Weekly. Welcome back to Trivia Land, where we're going to find out how Tank and Teresa did. Not great. Not well. Not well at all. <laughs> uh, you've, you've had better nights, but it's been an entertaining night. So let's see what the results are, shall we? Your first question submitted by listener Ethan K. In the soon-to-be-rethemed attraction Splash Mountain, how many times does Br'er Bear appear? Bonus points for answering where in the ride does he appear. Your answers were, you can hear him snoring, you can see his rear end, (laughs) there's the fox and the crocodile, and you can see him hanging. The answers that we were looking for... Hanging by a trap. Hanging by a trap, yes. The answers that we were looking for were... Tied up in the tree during the how do you do scene. His rear end appears at the beginning of the laughing place scene while he is looking for his laughing place, but he only finds bees. He appears again in the laughing place scene with his nose in a beehive while Brer Rabbit looks on and laughs. And he appears in zippity doo dah scene while being pestered by a crocodile. And also, of course, you can hear him snoring in Brer Bear's house at the very beginning of the ride. We're so close. We got four out of five. We did. We got four out of five. Well done on that one. Your second regular round question submitted by listener Kavei S. In celebration of Magic Happens returning soon, let's see if you can fill in the blanks from the first few lines of the parade song. This is the blank. Here's what you came for. This is the blank. A blank was made for. You said, this is the anthem. Here's what you came for. This is the moment magic was made for, and you got that correct. Oh, 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 wow. Oh, oh. Nice work, Teresa. Five. Nice work, Teresa. I'm going to well say done. a half a high five goes to, to Vern for questioning very <laughs> a, a little bit of verbal pointedly <laughs> with, are you sure that's the right order? Mm. <laughs> But you got it. True. You came up with the words. I That's just true. questioned your order of them. Well, thank so. you for taking pity on us tonight. <laughs> your third regular round question submitted by Brooke A. Who were the original project directors of the Main Street Electrical Parade? 
Your answer was, we're stumped. <laughs> the correct answer that I was looking for was Robert Janney and Ron Misiker. Couldn't have. Yep. Yeah, no. Nope. Learned something nope. new tonight. No, nothing. All right. And your fourth and final regular round question, submitted by listener Kevin M. At the fire station in Main Street, USA, what two names are on the horse stalls? <laughs> you answered Walt and Roy and Spark and Cole. The correct answers that I was looking for were Bess and Jess, the original horses that used to live there. Oh. Of course. Obviously, we were just <laughs> throwing course, you off the scent. A horse. <laughs> Cute. And your bonus question tonight, submitted by listener Kate A. The 20 dancing cars of Luigi's Rollicking Roadsters are all Luigi's cousins from Carsoli. How many of the cousins can you name? Your answers were Mario, Luigi, Celeste, Michael, Giovanni, Tony, Carlotta, Carlo, and Vito. The correct answer that I was looking for was... Salvatore, Lorenzo, Giovanni, Carlo, Angela, Rosa, Pascale, Sergio, Sofia, Vito, Tony, Elisabetta, Nicoli, Carina, Gina, Lucia, Carmela, Carlotta, Francesca, and Isabella. Ooh. Wow. Ooh. Good question. I gave you partial As credit. you read those all off, I was like, yes, those are definitely Italian names. <laughs> yes, those all sound very, those, house, those all sound like great choices. <laughs> yes. Dang, yeah, that was really good. So I gave you partial credit on that one, too for giving us the the good effort. Listeners, how do you think they did? How did you do listening at home? Do you think you've got some great questions that are going to really stump them next week? Well, if you'd like to hear your question read out loud, feel free to send that in to us at trivia at dlweekly.net. Well, we will be back next week with more Disneyland news and information. Until then, go out and enjoy the parks. Please remain seated until the podcast comes to a complete stop and the doors have opened. Then collect your belongings, watch your head, and step carefully from the episode. On behalf of all of our crew, thanks for traveling with us. And we hope you have a happy and memorable visit here at DL Weekly.